This elevator question, pretty fun stuff, a bit tricky if you're not used to doing stuff like this before. So you have a person standing on a scale uh, in, the, in the lift. Why would you do that? But never mind. At a certain instant, the bathroom scales reach 58 kg. Why is it less than a person's mass? The answer is, bathroom scales are not actually measuring your mass. We'll see why in a bit. So which row could be possible for the motion and, and direction? Where is this person moving? Why is the bathroom scale less than the actual mass? So this is what we call apparent... I know it's not weight. Weight is Newton. But apparent weight, lah, okay? So weight is mg. So it's not the true weight. Why? So if we draw out the whole scale thing, what's happening? What is actually, what is actually measured by the bathroom scale? Think about it. So if we have an elevator here and you have a human here standing on a very big scale, the scale is not measuring your weight. Let me repeat that. The scale is not measuring your weight. What is, okay, let's, let's say this is a human. Human. What's the forces acting on the human? There are two things. First one is the weight of the human. Second thing is actually the contact force from the scale. So I'm going to call this N from scale. So the scale is pushing up the human, holding up the human, okay? And this contact force is the thing that is shown on the scale's reading. Okay, so this is one free body diagram for the scale, uh, for the human, sorry. If you want to draw a free body diagram for the scale, it's going to look a little different. So the scale is here. You're going to have the weight of the scale. Why would you care so much? But anyway, you will have the contact force from the human stepping on the scale. You know, the legs pushing on the scale. And you have one more, which is the contact force from the elevator on the scale. And on scale. Human, sorry. So I, I, I color them both orange to show that they are... Newton, the law pairs. I push you, you push me. Okay, so don't don't confuse these two. We are looking at different systems. Now, if you want to go, sure, let's go one more. How about the big box? What are the forces acting on it? If we draw a free body diagram. Now, the big box has all the weight, another weight of the whole thing, the whole lift elevator. And you also have what, what holds the lift up? Tension force, a rope or something like that. Lah. Okay, so this I'll just call this tension force. Okay, so what else do we have? Ah, we forgot the scale. So on the floor of the scale, you have some kind of normal contact force. I should call it this green from the scale. Pushing down. You see how they're all related? So which one should we look at? There are three different objects, different, different combination of forces acting on them. We are going to look at the human. Okay, because we are looking at why the human weighs a certain thing. So... Weight is the actual weight, 60 kg, this one. What is actually measured though is the 58 kg. So that will be this one. Because that is what the normal contact force is, which is also what is pressing down on the scale itself. That's why it shows. Sorry, la, 58 kg times 9.81. Sure, sure, let's put that 9.81. Okay, so with that in mind, how do we think of the type of motion? My first question is, if the scale is showing 58 up, and your weight is supposed to be 60 kg times 9.81, um, do you think there's a net force? Upwards says 58, downwards says 60. Hmm, there is... A net force and the net force is downwards net force which also means the whole the human is accelerating downwards so how do I show this uh, accelerate down now okay so these two things we should know acceleration means you cannot have constant speed already so this is out if you add a constant speed the reading on the scale should show your true reading. 60, 60. But now it's 58, 60. Hmm. Okay, something funny. Now the next one is, okay, so the motion is slowing down, but is it slowing down uh, while your leaf is moving down or while your leaf is moving up? Oh. Okay, let's look at animation to help us out here. Actually, I changed my mind. I'm going to tell you how to find the answer right now. 
So in case you want to just find that. Okay, so we know it's slowing down, which means velocity is decreasing. Let me repeat that. Slowing down means velocity decreasing, also known as deceleration. So if your acceleration is already pointing downwards, it means your velocity have to be pointing upwards. Then only you can have deceleration. So velocity, um, direction of movement, you're looking about velocity. So you're moving up. So this is the only possible choice here, D. Let me give you some pointers how to think about whether you're speeding down or slowing up. So there's a few combinations. Let's say you are already moving in this direction and you accelerate in that same direction. Man, I should change this color if I can. There. So my question is, is the object getting faster and faster? You're moving to the right, you speed up to the right. Yes, it's getting faster. So um, getting faster. Let me use simple English. Getting faster. Also known as what we call acceleration. Because V and A are in the same direction. If positive, both also positive. The other scenario is, if you are pointing, uh, sorry, your velocity, you are traveling to the right. Positive. We define to the right as positive. But then your acceleration huh, is to the left, which is negative. What's happening to the object? It's moving to the right, but accelerating to the left. This is what we say the object is getting slower. Also known as deceleration. Deceleration. Hmm. Interesting. So you can also identify that by the, the signs. If one is positive, one is negative, means you are slowing down. Because they're pointing, the arrows are pointing in different directions. If both are the same signs, means you're getting faster, you're accelerating. Okay, so that is how you can identify whether which direction it is going up, swing down. Now we can go look at the animation. Ah, So here's one uh, simulation I recommend for you to try out, play with it. I'll put the link down below. Comment if I didn't do it. <laughs> so what's happening here is you can create a simulation for all the possible types of scenarios for a person in an elevator. So what you see here, this free body diagram is like the one I drew. You're looking at the human. The human has a normal force acting on it because scale is pushing up on the human, also known as a scale reading. And then, of course, the human has a certain weight. Now, depending on the acceleration, which you can change in one of the sliders, you will see that the perceived weight and the actual weight is different. So if the, uh, the elevator is accelerating up a lot, the scale will read a very large reading because the human is pressing into the scale while the Elevator moves up like that. Okay. And also, acceleration, if you change acceleration to negative, you will notice something else, that the perceived weight is slower, th smaller than actual weight. So acceleration plays a role. Velocity. Mm, you can set the initial velocity. And of course, the fun thing is you can hit play and you can watch the, per the elevator speed up with your own eyes. Okay. So yeah, go play around with this simulation and you better understand this whole elevator kind of question. But the most important thing is, normal force is the scale reading. Normal force acting on the human is the scale reading. So keep that in mind whenever you see questions like this. That's all for this question. I'll see you in the next one then. Bye-bye.